The next cornerstone concept of mathematical analysis is theorem. So, what is a theorem? A theorem is a statement about a relationship between concepts. Let's look at an example: the Rose theorem. Rose theorem says, for every function f from closed interval a b to the reals, if f is continuous on closed interval a b and differentiable on open interval a b, and f a equals f b. Then there exists a C in open interval A B such that f prime C equals zero. Here is a diagram showing its meaning. The important point to take is that a theorem holds true in all cases, not just some cases or even the majority of cases. Next, we notice that a theorem is made of two parts: its premises and its conclusion. A theorem has one or more premises. In Rose theorem, there are three premises, which are three conditions that must be met. The first premise is that the function f must be continuous on its domain, which is the closed interval from A to B. The second premise is that the function f must be differentiable on the open interval A to B. The third premise is that the value of f at point A equals its value at point B. So, if any or more of these conditions are not met, The theorem fails. A theorem has one conclusion. It says then there is a point C between A and B, such that the derivative of function f at this point C is zero. It doesn't tell us exactly where C is. It just says that C must exist. As always, we use examples and diagrams to gain insight. Here, let's examine why every premise must be met. Or the theorem fails. The first premise is that f is continuous on closed interval a b. Here we are showing a function that is not continuous on closed interval a b. This function still meets the other two premises: differentiable on open interval a b, and f a equals f b. But we can't find a point c such that its derivative is zero. Thus, we conclude this premise is necessary. The second premise is that f is differentiable on open interval a b. Here again, we are showing a function f equals the absolute value of x. This function meets the first and third premises. It is continuous on closed interval a b, and f a equals f b. However, it is not differentiable at the origin point zero zero. Again, we cannot find a point c where the derivative is zero. Thus, the second premise is also necessary. The third premise is that f a equals f b. This diagram shows a function f which is continuous on closed interval a b and differentiable on open interval a b, but f a does not equal f b. Can we find a point between a and b where the derivative is zero? No, we cannot. This proves that the third premise is necessary. The proof of a theorem. Will be discussed in the next video.